Is this acceptable? Or is this acceptable? Whatever you want, hey, it's all right with me. What we are seeing today in many churches is just kind of a bringing down of the reverence of what's happening. Yeah, I understand that this is not some sort of really, really ultra religious thing that we're supposed to do. Come there and we're supposed to have a somber face and the preacher's supposed to have on robes or gowns and, and have a large hat and sit in a big, beautiful chair. I get that. But we are still not to minimize the coming together and just kind of cheapen it. And I'm, and maybe, may, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being, maybe I'm being a Pharisee. Maybe I'm being too legalistic. Maybe I'm just being an old fuddy duddy. But some things just makes you wonder, is this acceptable? For example, at a church that actually is nearby to me, uh, this is Quinnia Fellowship. The pastor is Dr. Ronnie Gaines, or Goins. I'm sorry, Ronnie Goins. I think that's his name. There's some other issues. I won't get into some of those things, but I, my question is, do you all think that this is appropriate? There's a song that we sang this morning. It was it's, it wasn't written for the church, but it has church significance to me. It has some it has, there's some Christ significance. Some of y'all know. Now that's a question. That, okay, so there's a secular song that he's speaking of that has that's, that wasn't written for the church, but it has Christ significance. Okay. But some don't. But when some of y'all catch it, you're gonna get with this song, and we're gonna educate the youngsters on what music kind of used to sound like. What, what it says. It seems to me that what he's really doing is he's just trying to take an opportunity to kind of relive some of the songs that he likes, which, listen, I don't, I, I'm not one that believes that secular music in and of itself is a sin. Now, there are some songs that you have no business listening to. There are some songs that I think that are okay for, let's say, a married couple. And there are some songs that a married couple could listen to that a single couple should not, or a single couple, a single person should not listen to. An unmarried couple should not listen to. It's so amazing to be loved. I follow you through the so uh... Now, I'm cool with Luther Vandross, but then again, I'm also married. Should that be used or sung in the church? And I don't know that that necessarily has cry significance, especially considering that if you were to sing that, the first thought of someone's mind is not going to be to Christ. It's going to be to, hey, that, that is those of us who are old enough or remember Luther. Uh, that's where our minds are going to go. Not to, well, how can we, because you can take any song. You can literally take any song and give it some Christian lyrics. You you absolutely could. And I guess that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'll let you all decide. But I don't know that this, what's happening here is actually a good thing. Amazing, and I've been waiting. Now, what he's doing now is he's going to people in the audience and asking if they've got a song like you. that could also it's be so kind of changed to a Christian love. song or I Christian meaning. You to the moon in the sky it's above. like America's Got Talent. In the ah! Ah! Boy, he got that dance on my son of Bobo, boy. Uh, now, nah, apparently shit. he likes it. Apparently the pastor likes that, but should he? There's one particular passage that I think we need to keep in mind, and that is, uh, this would be in 1 Thessalonians 5.22. He says, abstain from every form of evil. Some versions might say the appearance of evil or the appearance of sin. Again, could that be applied here? I think it, I think it could because of what it could convey. But let's go back to him and see what else he's got going. Anybody that's no one? You got a song, it's, it's sacred, but it got some sauce on it. Who else got one? It's got some you sauce got on it. <laughs> Who? Which one? Come here. Come here. I mean, he's really feeling this. I'm, I'm, under, I'm trying to figure out what is the sermon about. There's so many things I've got to tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know how. Somebody told me there was trouble at home. Cause we never talk about when we spend time alone. Yeah, so how we're supposed to know? Know that something is wrong. So we're gonna sing Babyface. Now I know who Babyface is. Listen, Babyface went to my high school, so I'm a I'm a fan. He's a fellow Hoosier, but in the church. Because again, when you hear this song, your mind is not going to, even if you change the words a little bit, 
what's going to happen because you're singing the majority of the songs the lyrics are his actual lyrics you're going to you're going to change one or two words and then and that all of a sudden it becomes a christian song well we got a way to communicate it keeps a happy home and no have to call it the holy ghost on me yeah whatever yeah, you no, want what, that's not, no. holy ghost is all right with me holy ghost because you got that grace and mercy come on so whip it on me hey it's been and now i'm sitting looking in the front row and you got some some people who might not know that i'm assuming i don't know if the if the older white guy in the front row might know who babyface is and understand the song the song is um whip appeal even those that know it, that's not what you're thinking. That's not the song is 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 speaking about something really sexual. And you want to take that song and say, Holy Ghost, you got that what whip appeal or Holy Ghost appeal? That Cause you got that Holy Ghost. Come on. <laughs> What? I'm sorry. It just it it seems as though it's an opportunity for somebody just to kind of go down memory lane and just bring the world into this. And there's a passage. There is a passage, guys, that says, "What fellowship has light with darkness?" It says in Second Corinthians six fourteen it says, "Do not be bound together with unbelievers." For what partnership, or some would say, what fellowship um, have righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship? And interestingly enough. That's the name of the church, Koinonia. What Koinonia, what fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony has Christ with Balao? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? And I think just really in a lot of aspects of that, you can apply that with what's happening here. What business is it of the pastor, the leader, the shepherd, to bring this in and kind of mix the two together? That was one of the problems that, that the children of Israel had. They would just take vestiges of this or that. Uh, of the pagan societies and bring it in. Again, I'm not saying that secular music in and of itself is a bad thing. I'm not saying that. But when you want to take that and, and use the entirety of the song, except for maybe one or two words, because what's going to be left in the minds of the people is not that, hey, he changed the words, but you know what? I want to go listen to that song. The first thought might be, let me go listen to some Luther. Let me go listen to some Babyface. Let me go listen to whoever else. And it, just, it doesn't just stop there, especially even at this particular church, but in a lot of churches, because if you didn't have a problem with that, if you didn't think that that was necessarily wrong, well, surely, or maybe you won't, well, do you think that there's something wrong with this? Hey. 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 What this is, a lot of predominantly black churches might have people in their churches who were uh, members of fraternities and sororities in college. Now, this is something that you don't really see a lot of with a lot of white sororities or fraternities or Hispanic or Asian predominantly where you're 30 or 40 or 50 and you're still wearing your colors and so forth. Maybe it's just me. I don't know a lot of uh, older white fraternity and sorority members. I know a lot of white folks who were in fraternities and sororities when they were my age, but now older, they don't, they don't wear their jackets. They don't wear their colors. And we can talk about whether being in a fraternity and sorority is wrong. I think it is because it's some sort of secret society. You're, you're paying allegiance to them. And then you're going to turn around and promote this secret society. And I agree, I get it. Most folks don't look at it as a secret society, but you're going to promote it in the church. You're going to promote something that you've given this allegiance to in the church. Again, what is the purpose of having this in the church and doing the little steps and so forth? okay is this is this appropriate to do that again there are some that that care more about their greek letters there are some that care more about their colors their numbers and so forth more than the word of god i just don't to me i think one of the things especially for a pastor this past also is important therefore let us not judge one another anymore but rather determine this not to put an obstacle 
or a stumbling block in a brother's way. Could this, either the singing or the stepping, could that be a stumbling block? Could that be a cause of someone to stumble? I know and I'm convicted or convinced in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but to him who thinks anything to be unclean to him, it is unclean. And so now I think that what this is was just wrong, but there are some things that aren't wrong, but might be viewed or seen um, to by another person as wrong, especially if you put it in the church. I think that's the biggest problem. Uh, I think there's a problem with the fraternities and sororities, period, and then to turn around and bring them into the church. The secular scene, I think that it could be a problem, but in and of itself, not necessarily it's a problem, but then to bring it into the church. What we are commanded to do, this is the, the, the passage that I think we all should live by. It's one of my favorite passages, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, especially in church, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Look what he says in verse 32. Give no offense either to Jews or Greeks. Don't give, don't, don't cause anyone to be offended by what you do. I think in both those cases, both those situations, a person could find themselves offended. But what is the ultimate goal? Give no offense to Jew or Greek or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things. Look what he says, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many. Why? So that they may be saved. Isn't that the purpose of our church, our gathering, one that we grow in God and that we would bring other folks who want to have a relationship with him and to grow in him also? And I don't know if that's necessarily happening here with this, with these demonstrations. And so for me, I would say, no, that's not only is a bridge too far, that's just way too far. That is where one might be uh, an example of poor taste, the singing. And again, what's the message? Was there a message? What's the point of us coming here? Why does this, how does this fit into what we're doing? You take 30 minutes to go over the singing. OK, fine. That might be in poor taste for some people, but certainly the other one with the dancing, with the stepping and so forth. That's just wrong all the way around as far as I can see. But I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say if you feel the same way as I do. Now, personally, me, I could not go to a church that did that. I just could not because my next question is, what else is next? And oh, by the way, what else has also been kind of maybe dishonored or at least not considered or regarded, regarded as something holy? Remember, God made the statement that by those that approach me, I will be regarded as holy. I don't know that you can get that view from watching these particular church services. Maybe it's just me.